submit it all to you. I submit my life. Now, um, since this fast began, we, you know, is Connect 2024, which is connecting to power change. And we have made it clear that change occurs because power is displayed. Anywhere power is displayed, change must occur. And anywhere there's no power, frustration continues. Anywhere power is not available, darkness continues. You see, you see, darkness is around here now, but because power is available, darkness is not existing. Power from ECG could drive darkness around this house far away. If power from ECG can drive power, can drive darkness away, how much more power from God killing all the devils against you in 2024? So I want things to change. What do I do? I make sure I'm connected to power. And we've proven it from the beginning that God is a God of power. Bible says, God said, once have I spoken and twice have we heard that all power belongs to God. All power, all power belongs to God. Um, Luke chapter 10 and verse 19, Bible said, Behold, I give unto you power and authority. Trample upon snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. If God does not have power, he can't give power. A man can only give what he has. What a man do not have, he can give. He says, Behold, I give unto you. God gives because he has. So, I'd like you to conclude in your heart, I serve a God of power. I serve a God of might. I serve a God of capacity and ability. The Bible said in Ephesians uh, uh, 4, 4, 4 to the Bible said to him that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we ever imagine or ask. God is able to do, which means God has ability to do. Power is strength to do, strength to perform. I pray that the power of God this year will turn your world around. The power of God this year will command a favor upon you. The power of God this year will cause that way you fell before, you will fail no more. The power of God this year will make sure that what belongs to you in 2024 shall locate your life. That your enemy will have been such that proof that you are alive and you're waiting for something to happen to you. I pray in the name of Jesus that by the power of God, everything that is meant to be yours in this 2024, none shall miss you, none shall by, 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 by pass you. Every blessing that belongs to you shall come your way. Somebody give attention and shout an amen like a thunder. What do we do to connect to power? We've seen different things. Yesterday we saw two. We saw alignment to God's will. And we saw the use of the name of Jesus. In case you were not in church yesterday, we said that there are two things that can give you access to power. Alignment to the will of God. I said a man in the will is a man that will experience power. And we now say that the use of the name of Jesus. Today, one more. Romans chapter 1 and verse number 1. What do I do to gain access to power? What is it that traffics the power of God into my life and into my space for the change that I desire to have? Romans 1, from the Bible says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised are full by the prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Verse 3 says, Concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Follow me again. Verse 3 says, Concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. So Jesus, the son of God, has two paternal stands. The first stand is, Bible said, 
that he was made the seed of David, the son of David, by the flesh. So by the flesh, Jesus of Nazareth was made to be the seed of David because he came from the seed of Judah. So he was the seed of David. That's why Rabbi Bartimaeus got a revelation of this in Mark chapter 10. Rabbi Bartimaeus asked who was passing by. They say he was Jesus. He flying to open his mouth and said, Jesus, thou son of David. Normally, we know him to be the son of Joseph, the husband of Mary. But by revelation, he got to know that by his natural descent, he came from the root of Jesse. He came from the seed of Abraham. So, in the flesh, Jesus is called the son of Abraham, the son of David by flesh. But by God, which means the first paternal stand is from David, the second paternal stand is from God. The Bible said he was called the son of God. He was called the seed of David, but was called the son of God. What is it that made him the son of God? The Bible said he was called the son of God with power by the spirit of holiness. So he became the son of God that has power. Power with him was because he was the son of God. What was it that gained him or earned him access to becoming the son of God? That is with power. He says through the spirit of holy living. So by living for God, he attracted grace that endowed him with power. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a, a connection between living for God and having the power of God. The man that lives for God shall be giving the power of God. The man that lives for God shall be, shall be loaded with the power of God. The righteous will have access to power. There is connectivity between righteousness and power. Righteousness and power. Righteousness and power. Every power you see Jesus displayed in scripture was because he was in the rightness of God. So God could trust him and God could pour out his energy. Ladies and gentlemen, anytime God finds out that your heart is after him, your heart is after living for him, you are too much committed to living to please him, what will he do? He will rub his nature in you and the more his nature is being rubbed on you, the more his power shall flow from you. I want to be full of power, live for God. I want to be full of power, live to please God. Don't live to please yourself. Don't live to please people, live to please God. If God is pleased as you live, he will rub his power upon you and you will become a man functioning at the altitude of God. Doing what natural men can do. I pray in the name of Jesus, may the power of God flow through you this year by living right. Somebody say, I hear. So what do you need to do? Live right. He was called the son of God with power by the spirit of right living. What does it mean to live right? It means to live pleasing God. It means to live doing all that God is happy with. Number three, it means to live rejecting everything God is not happy with. What God does not love you don't love it. What God loves, you love it. Anything that makes God feel bad, you avoid it. You avoid it completely. You say no to it. If you know that lies will make God feel bad, you say no. You know that alcohol, tobacco will make God feel bad, you say no, I will not. I will not. Whatsoever you know that will discomfort God, you reject it, you refuse it. That's the kind of life God wants us to do. And like, can I say this? That was why he gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us the Holy Spirit so that we can live holy for him. To live holy simply means to live holy, live completely for him. I know there are sometimes we fall into errors, we fall into mistakes, but you know, the more 
that you, you love to please God, even at the point of failing, something will be giving you a warning. Something will be telling you no. You, you, I, I've seen people who were falling, but something in them was saying no, no. So they could not go extent to which they wanted to go. Something dragged them back. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. In the day that way the devil will come to, to, to bring you down so you lose power. I pray that the mercy will speak for you. I pray that the hand of God shall come upon you. Lift your voice and shout and amen like a thunder. It's a decision I will live for God. Even though there may be temptations, even though there may be obstacles, but my heart is beating after God. My heart is longing to give God the best. Even if you fail, but there's something in your heart telling you, 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 you are sincere. You don't fail from God's standard and you're bold. You don't fail from God's standard and you pretend. Before God, you are telling God, God, I don't want to do this again. There is a heart cry. There is a heart that longs for God, that makes God trust you. Power from God is an investment based on trust. If God can trust you to live for him, he will drop power upon you. I pray in the name of Jesus. May God give you that kind of heart that longs after God. That heart that wants to please God at all times. That heart that wants to do what God wants you to do. That heart that will say no to everything the devil would like you to do. As you turn that your amen now, may this grace locate you today. In the mighty name of Jesus, it's your heart that qualifies the unction and the flow of God's virtue. God's virtue does not flow until the heart is right. A right heart. Even at the point of wrong, is asking for mercy. A wrong heart, at the point of wrong, feels I'm doing well. No remorse. No repentance. Are we together? I've said that no man on earth can be perfect. But we must be driving towards excellence. Thou lovest doing what is right. Therefore, the Lord thy God will anoint you. This year, may you learn to do right. And may God anoint you. That amen is good enough. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we're going to be running. What are the blessings for living right? Number one, you will be blessed with the fear of God. If there's anything I've discovered is that when you love to live right, God will bless you with grace to fear Him. The fear of God is for those who intentionally, you know, we live at the point whereby the fear of God has escaped the heart of men. The fear of God has escaped the heart of men. But it's wrong. And how do we restore the fear of God? A desire to live right will attract grace for the fear of the Lord. Psalms 25, verse 14. He says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show him, he will show them his covenant. Glory be to God. The secret of the Lord is with them. So if you are the one that fears him, you tremble at his commandments. You have the consciousness of honoring him. You have the consciousness of not offending him. He will bless you with the fear of the Lord. And what will the fear of the Lord do? It will give you access to the understanding of his covenant. You see, covenant work is a special work for those that live right and has inherited fear for God. God will begin to open the covenant for you. You begin to understand the mysteries of God. Can I say this? Prosperity in the kingdom of God answers to the understanding of the mysteries of God. If you don't understand the mysteries of God, there is a level to which you will see the blessings of God. The mysteries of God is what powers the prosperity of God. Now, for that to happen, and until that happens, you will not have access to a kind of life that attracts favor, a kind of life that attracts goodness. A kind of, there is something that God will show you because you fear Him that can give you speed. There is something that God will show you because you fear Him that can make you win in one day what others win in 10 years. There is something that, 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 that comes upon you when God knows you are the one that fears Him. He
drops understanding that the way you see things changes. The way you understand things changes. Somebody will hear Bible and, and, and he will hear nothing. Somebody will hear a sentence in scripture. He will hear so many things. Somebody will know many things and will do none. Somebody will know little and put what he has known to work and life is working for him. Ladies and gentlemen, fear for God gives you access to the understanding of the covenant. Many people in church want to understand God, but they cannot. Many wants to understand God. I don't wonder why somebody can be in church. Ten years, the same problem. Doesn't God does answer. God answers, but there's something the person has not discovered. If the heart is full of malice, unforgiveness, you know, you know, anger, there are things God cannot show you. If there are evil thoughts consistently in your heart, there are things God cannot show you. There are things God cannot show you. God is a revealer of his covenant and when you can understand the covenant hey life will be better for you i pray for somebody in the name of jesus that by the fear of god may god give you access to the understanding of the covenant and as you understand the covenant may the blessing of the covenant overtake your limitations overtake your obstacles may you be catapulted into the realm of god somebody shout in the middle like a thunder so living for god will introduce the fear of God. And the fear of God will give you access to a covenant which will end up activating your speed as a man. Secondly, the fear of the Lord will bring you a blessed generation. So look at it. I live right and I'm blessed by the fear of the Lord. And because I fear God, my generation is blessed. You want your children to be great. You want your children not to be dullard. You want your children to do well. Ladies and gentlemen, fear for God, which is a product of living for God, must be your goal. It brings a blessing upon your children, upon your children's children. There are things your children cannot suffer because you live for God. There are things your posterity cannot suffer because you live for God. Living for God is profitable. It is profitable. It is profitable that you're not a liar. It is profitable that you don't live your life the way people live their life. You live your life in agreement with God, God's word. It is profitable that you're not the one who is full of gossip. It's profitable. You're not the one slandering people at the back. The Bible said that righteousness is profitable or godliness is profitable in all things. Godliness is profitable in all things. It brings blessings over your children. How many of you know that God's intervention in Isaac's life was because of a walk that Abraham, his father, had with God? There is the Bible say, Because Abraham, thy father, walked with me, kept my laws, kept my status. But man will not kill you. Was in the midst of famine, famine couldn't kill him because of covenant to walk between God and his father. The life we live today will affect our children's life. See what scripture says Psalm 112, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord and delighted greatly in, the, in, the, in his co co commandments. The seed, his seed, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Because this man fears God, I told you that fear of God is a product of living for God. Because this man fears God, because he lives for God, the Bible says that his children shall be, shall be mighty in the land. Which means his children will not be pouts, juggernauts, foolish people, alcoholic, alcoholics. In my trap, they call them a drop passenger. You will not give birth to children who are miscreants. Who anytime they see, they see 
fighters on the street. They are the they are the one. Anytime they say they've robbed the house, they say, check that man's son. It's like he looks like a thief. But you don't want to be like that. Anytime they're looking for who has broken somebody's head in the class. You know, there are students that, their report is always that they broke somebody's head. Every time, they, 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 they call him, I know a friend like that, when he's good. Every time they invite them to school, every time they remind them, ah, it's your daughter has done picking back The man will say, why, why, why? Next time, it's your son. He used what to, to break somebody's head. They don't invite that couple for any good thing about their children. It became a concern to them. One day, it was made open. They say when the father of that, 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 that children, when he was small, he was a rascal. He, he cannot be tamed. Because he couldn't be tamed. DNA is at work in the children, not tamed. Our life had and will always have an impact upon our children. Whether you like it or not. How many of you, you know Abraham? How we told a lie. I am my wife's brother. She is my sister. He knew how when the son grew up, the father was already dead. Mother dead. How did he know? That incident happened when he was not born. Okay? Chapter 12 of Genesis. Isaac was not born. Rebecca was not born. After chapter 12, 13, 14, 15. <laughs> one day, one day, this boy grew up, I think in chapter 20, and, 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 and got married. He also has famine. Famine that happened in his father's day also came to his own day. He also ran back to go and find help somewhere, as his father did. When he was on the way, he told his wife, you know, you're beautiful. All of you are marrying beautiful wife. You know, you're beautiful. Please, anytime as you get there now, for your sake, they will kill me. But pretend. The same lie, the same famine, there was a reputation. That's why you must find out the kind of life your father lived, the kind of life your mother lived, and avoid it. If you don't avoid it, their calamity becomes your calamity. Their limitations becomes your limitation. That's why most of us, we never paraded. We never saw parents that lived well. Now you are a parent, or you're not yet a parent, or you are a child of God in ruler city. You must live right, not just for yourself, but for your children. There are things you cannot afford to do. Even if you make mistakes, it's in the past. There's no one that can make mistakes. But after you must have made mistakes, correct it now. You know, a new year is an opportunity to correct the past. So correct it now. I will live right for my children. For their sake, there are things you must not do. The Bible says the fear of the Lord will command might of God upon the generation of the upright. The Bible says that wealth and riches shall be in his house. Which means righteousness will command the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord will bring wealth world am i making am i making sense will bring world and honor and honor if you want to check out of penury you don't want to die in poverty live for god live to fear god fearing god will command wealth upon your life you don't escape poverty by walking just walking out you can walk out and walk off I've seen people that are walking out, sweating like Jackie, walking, hey, but yet no food. You are not eating better because you, you worked harder. You are eating better because God favored your work. And there's a kind of life you must live to attract the favor of God. Am I making sense to anybody here? Eh? You must not live the way people live and expect God to bless you how he has not blessed them. You must live with the fear of the Lord. And as you live to fear God, God will trust you with wealth and honor. Somebody in 2024, may the wealth and honor of God rest upon your head. If I'm you, my amen will be strong. 
Oh, is there anybody believing God that 2024 shall be great? 2024 shall be a year of finances. A year that you will unveil God. A year that everything good in God shall flow in you. If I'm you, thunder your amen right now. Number two. Living right brings divine security. The right just are preserved. Psalms 34 and verse 15. Righteousness preserves Righteousness preserves. He says, The eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous, and his ears is upon, is open to hear their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off their remembrance from the earth. So look at it, balance it this way. The eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous to do them good, and his ears are upon them to answer their prayers. When God's eyes is upon you, evil cannot rest upon you. When God's eyes is upon you, that is security upon you. When God is hearing your prayers, that is defense for you. He now says that, that the same face of God is now against the evil doer. So every evil doer is open for destruction. Everyone that walketh in righteousness will encounter the eyes of God upon them, making sure that evil does not overtake them. Even though they walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, God will be with them. And because God is with them, valley will not swallow them. Death will not overcome them. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking to anybody here. Righteousness commands preservation. I pray as you desire to walk for God, live for God, may you be preserved. Number three, righteousness brings favor. Brings favor. So when you live right, the power of God starts working in you, bringing favor. Psalms 5 and verse number 12. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will thou encompass him like a shield. You want to enjoy favor this year? Live for God. As you learn to live right, talk right, do that which is right. I'm not looking at your past. I'm looking at your now. So it doesn't matter what has happened in the past. Today is a new day. This is a new year. Live new to encounter grace for new things. Are we together? When we live right, favor comes. The Bible says that God will surround the righteous with favor like a shield. What do they use shield in doing? To defend the one who is fighting, which means favor will come to defend you. You won't see shame. Favor will defend you from failure. Where they say to other people, get back. Whoever will defend you, they will say, get in. Can't even say, good evening, look at you. When they reject all that, they will accept you. Why? Because favor will defend you. I pray in the name of Jesus, standing before you today, I prophesy about the power of righteousness. May you be favored this year. Your coming nights shall be full of favor. Your coming nights shall be full of favor. With favor, you will see shame. With favor, fly high. Number four. The righteous enjoys deliverance from trouble. Psalms 34 and verse 19. Many are the trouble, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. The righteous will enjoy deliverance, deliverance, deliverance from accident, deliverance from death, deliverance from evil. I pray in the name of Jesus that the thousand shall fall by, by, by your side. The ten thousand that may fall by your right hand, may God deliver you. The sun will not smite you by the day, neither the moon by the night. Because you've chosen to walk right, live right. I pray in the name of Jesus that God shall deliver you from evil, from poverty, from death. From sickness, from evil bullets, from evil arrow, from attack of hell, from the evil of a witch, from the wizardly hands, anyone that will take your name to a native doctor for destruction, God shall deliver you and they shall go down. Any man that will dig a pit for you and say you shall fall in, may God deliver you, may they fall into that pit. Somebody lift your voice and thunder your enemy now. Righteousness delivers from trouble. He keepeth all his bones. None of them is broken. Say evil shall slay the wicked. But they that hate the righteous shall be in peace. <laughs> so if you are in righteousness and somebody decides to hate you, that person is in trouble. Can I drop it upon you? Anyone that will hate you this year, may God visit them with punishment. You better say that amen as if you're a believer. 
You see, you see, when such things are prophesied, somebody will do as if he's twin chin gum. You will not receive it with a strong amen. And that is what, what causes your covering not to be complete. I pray in the name of Jesus that any man that will rise up and hate you and decide to do you harm, anyone that will rise up to plague you, in the mighty name of Jesus, may God punish them. If your amen thunders right now, it will happen without delay. Righteousness brings boldness. It makes you fearless. It makes you audacious. It makes you conquer cowardly. You cannot be righteous and be and be and be and be timid. No way. Righteousness will kick away timidity at all. It gives you boldness, 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 fearless, audacious. Bravery is pretty. That's the work of righteousness. Proverbs 28 and verse 1. He said, The wicked flee when no man pursue them, but the righteous is as bold as a lion. Which means righteousness will drop in you the lionic grace. That grace that fears nothing. The lionic grace. You roar in prayer, Satan is shaking. When you speak, power flows. When you make a decree, it shall be established. Glory be to God. It makes you bold, fearless, cowardly. Is checking out. I'm not talking to anybody. You know, the Bible says God has given you a spirit of fear, or the spirit of timidity. This year, 2024, you won't be timid anymore. The people that they are okay when they are around peasants, but anytime they are around sophisticated men, they lose their breath. They see people who are who are better than them, they lose their breath. They, Two plus two, they say, are, are you talking about Papa two? They lose their bearing, they forget their name, they forget themselves. At the verge of breakthrough, ca cowardly and, and, and timidity will make them lose opportunity. But it will not happen again. In the place of honor, you shall be bold. In the place of, 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 of influence, you shall be bold. You shall be bold before kings. Because if you are not bold before kings, kings will not receive you into their kingdom. The boy was called out of prison. He went before the king, very bold. And the king said, what? I have a dream. He said, no man can interpret this. But they said, God, who should give you? Boldness! Do you know the truth? If you know so well, and you're very timid, you'll be rejected. If you know very little, and you're bold, you serve. Boldness serves. The illiterate monk. If you are bold, even the illiteracy will sound as if it is literacy. You can sell lie as truth because you're bold. You're bold saying it. But you're saying the truth. Not be bold. People will doubt you. If people doubt you, you cost it. You don't pray that they will not doubt you anymore. See a teller who, was, who came to sow for you. Desire and when he walked in the house, he said, Can this thing be enough? He said, hey, 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 Can't even explain yourself. He said, Okay, we'll call it into you. We'll call it until forever. But see, somebody can know so well. Just walked in with boldness. What is it? Let me measure you. Measure, measure. Your waist is, is, is 42. Even if it is 30, 38. <laughs> Length of plaza. He measure you. He doesn't know what he's doing. He measure you. He said, your, your length of browser is 42. Measure, say 32. That is half, half, half naked. <laughs> but because he's bold, you believe him. So even if you know what is, what you know the right thing, but you are timid about it, they will reject you. I saw a man at 58 couldn't marry. Why? When he started coming to church, I said, Pastor, I said, what is the problem? He said, I, don't, I, can't, I can't understand. I said, we need to understand. By the time I explained him, I found out that and even if small girl like this, he's really shaking, shaking. They can't be bored and tell sister, you know I love you. You just be bored, right? You meet you and say, what is your name? Have you married before? 
What, what, what is your suicide? This area you're wearing, are you, are you wearing it from beneath your bone? And no lady wants to be hearing cock and boo story. Don't run around the bush. Hit the hammer at the nail. The ladies will be waiting. Hit the hammer. Tell me something. Tell me something. You will run around the bush. The person will run away. Until he was 58. So finally, you know, I didn't know. I, I know. You know, trust me. If I pastor you, I pastor you in everything. So I just have to do some. That was there. Teach you. To prepare the person. Put them together. You know, my pastoring is different too. I can't pastor you and not. I won't just give you what God's word. I will be around. Connect everything. You want to raise a business? Come along. <laughs> Anyhow, and that's who I am. Others oh, were there, but that's where God made me. And the man I live like this, I'm so fulfilled. I'm fulfilled seeing you being all around me well. It gives me joy. Nothing gives me joy. Trap passing through, and they're going to see Pam's motors. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Nothing moves me. If I see Dominion uh, uh, rulers, um, <laughs> Christian the cleaner. Christian London. What's the name again? Huh? Oh, City London. <laughs> City London. <laughs> Plus, and, and so on and so forth. I'm excited. So I put it, I put it together. You know, this beautiful banker. No, just do the clicking. I did very well. They met. That was the day I found out what the problem was. After a while, he said, okay, we can meet some other people. He just crossed my face. Just got See, after a while, I was telling him, tell me something. You see, it didn't make sense. He, sir, he, the way he prepared me, you don't prepare him like that. I said, I prepare him. I prepared this guy. I put, I put him in the mouth. So when you meet, do what you do. You know, see how you do. If you see the way you should walk, see the way you look. They don't look on the ground. Look at her eyes. Seriously. When you're talking, look at You know, I, I taught this guy before my hand. Because of lack of boldness. Until I left that side, he wasn't married. I don't know what it happened. He wasn't married. <laughs> even when he goes to village, you know, even if you cannot approach city, village, you know, you know, villagers, you know, even village, you can perform. You will not be like that. Finally, righteousness causes lifting. Psalm 24, verse number 3. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? He that has a clean hands and a pure heart. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? And stand in the holy place. Who shall ascend? Who shall ascend? Do you want to ascend? Clean hands. Do you want to ascend? If by any reason you make a mistake, you're in a hurry to run back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Don't make a mistake, and the Holy Ghost tells you it's a mistake. You do both things and say, after all, after all, after all. After all, after all, after all. It's a problem. Anytime the Holy Ghost tells you this is wrong, be willing to repent. Am I making sense? Be willing to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Bible says the righteous man will fall seven times, and seven times can still rise again. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will rise. 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 Okay, now rise now to show the devil you will rise. Woohoo! Lift your hand and just give thanks, everybody.